Everybody knows how to Google, don't they? You're welcome, Internet. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content anywhere on the Internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Today we are jumping into r slash tales of neckbeards. Yes, indeed. I had an OP come to me via the Discord. He's like, have you seen my stories, Red X? Well, considering how slow the subs move, yes, i seen the stories. Yes, I I'm going to get to them, but uh, I just had a lot of other stuff on my plate. But that's how it goes around here sometimes. There's just too much good stuff. Got a lot to cover, and uh, I'm doing my best to keep all caught up with it and everything like that. So if you do post a story, either in Neckbeard Stories, Tales of Neckbeards, my personal subreddit, r slash redxreads, just know that I will get to it eventually. <laughs> I'm definitely doing my best, and I am hugely grateful for you guys sharing your stories with me. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and check out this very long saga, the first part of a saga, <laughs> which is titled The Beard of a Thousand Irritations. <laughs> <laughs> As usual, I haven't vetted it too hard, so I guess we'll just see what kind of dumpster fire we're in for. How big can this dumpster fire get? <laughs> Let's get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will jump right into this neckbeard cringe. The Beard of a Thousand Irritations. First Contact. Hi, everyone. And welcome to the first part of a series that's going to get, uh, I don't know how long exactly. <laughs> Pretty long. <laughs> I've been holding on to this story for a long time, and I think I can tell parts of it here, with a few details changed to protect the innocent and the bearded. <laughs> Who are not so innocent. The beard in question isn't sexually attracted to me, like the beards in most stories in the subreddit. Well, thank God for that, at least. <laughs> Instead, I'm a writing coach, and he's been hiring me to help him with his sci-fi world for a while. I've been listening to Neckbeard stories for a while, so as is the custom, I'm going to dub him the Beard of a Thousand Irritations. Tibodi for short. <laughs> I will probably give him my own nickname at some point, but I gotta like figure out what about him is catchy. <laughs> OP, a 30-something from Wales with an online writer coach business. Oh, that could have been good when I was doing blogging a few months back before I went all full-time YouTube. We've got the Beard of a Thousand Irritations, AKA T. Bodie, a customer of mine from a couple of time zones away. I've seen precisely one photo of him. He's very overweight, perhaps on the cusp of medical obesity. I have no idea whether he smells or what his self-care regime is, but oh boy has he got some nice guy and neckbeardy vibes. <laughs> he does have a girlfriend, though. Well, I feel sorry for his girlfriend already. <laughs> Emily is his girlfriend, artist for his world, a devout Christian, lives in the deep south of the U.S., reluctant to talk to anybody she doesn't already know online, has never responded to me with more than a sentence or two if she answers at all. Oh, so they're doing the long-distance thing. I, I. Jay is Tabodi's co-writer. Tabodi considers himself all but dependent on this guy to write the creative material for this project. Jay talks to me about as much as Tabodi's girlfriend does, despite my efforts to communicate with him as part of Tabodi's overall project. So you got two project partners that don't want to talk to you and one project partner that wants to talk to you too much. <laughs> I hope the pay is good, <laughs> at the very least. I first found Tabodi online. He showed an interest in the work that I do, and the potential for me to help him with his sci-fi story, but he wanted to know more before he took the plunge. That was understandable, so I answered his questions. He asked every question that you could possibly imagine about my prices and my services. And then when he'd asked every question that he could think of, he started repeating the same questions. <laughs> <laughs> or variations of those questions, so I started referring him back to my previous answers. <laughs> he also liked to chat. I chatted back a little bit just to grease the wheels and develop a good relationship. Some customers prefer to do that, which again is fine. Trust is everything in this business. 
but he seemed happy to just chat indefinitely. So eventually I told him that I needed to chat less because I have work to do. <laughs> he would hold off for a couple of days and then try to open up a chatty conversation again. And when I told him again that I was busy, he asked me what I was busy with exactly. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> None of your business. Work. <laughs> I'm aware at this point that I had given him plenty of time and needed to draw a line under his incessant questioning. Back then, however, I had almost no customers, so every single one counted, so I gave him much more of my time than he really deserved. I wrote up my to-do list a couple of times to make the point, but that went over his head. He kept on trying me to see if I was up to chat. <laughs> no, a thousand times no. Ugh. Eventually, I had to just tell him that this was starting to feel like harassment. <laughs> he sent me a tip, which was admittedly nice. Later, I would learn that that was his way of making up for overstepping my boundaries. It's a nice gesture on the surface, but you look a little deeper and you're like, ugh, is this money worth it? <laughs> then, he finally ordered from me. Hallelujah. Most of what I do as a writing coach is online consultation time. And that's what Tabodi booked for himself at two hours per week. I have a calendar designed specifically for international bookings so I can block out parts where I'm asleep or busy doing other things so that nobody books themselves in to work with me during the wee hours. <laughs> the wee hours are the time that I operate best, honestly. But I get that the night owl life ain't for everybody. Actually, it's for hardly anybody <laughs> in my experience. I told him of this calendar and its workings, and despite this, he kept on asking me if I was free at specific times. I have a low level of dyscalculia and get confused easily by trying to count back and forth over time zones, so I always refer people to the freaking calendar. <laughs> if the time is open, then I'm free. Simple as. The conversation would go as follows. He would ask me, Are you free at this time? And I would tell him, if it's free on the calendar, then yes. If it's not, then no. He wouldn't look at the calendar and instead suggest another time and ask, Is this alright? <laughs> I would ask, can you see the time on the calendar? And he would say something about us being in different time zones. I would remind him that it was a bad idea to try and get me to work out time zone differences manually, as I might get the time wrong and be out of the house at that time. He just would not seem to understand, and he would ask, Well, how about, is this time good then? <laughs> a few more times, until I just convinced him to just book a damn time. <laughs> if all that wasn't bad enough, then there was his tendency to repeatedly forget how to find my calendar. I'll be honest with you guys, I want customers. With this in mind, I make my calendar easy to find. I don't hide it because that's not a good way to get people to book stuff in. It's on my website and it has its own web page that comes up on Google if you search for my company name. And I also posted it in the Telegram forum maybe a dozen times. And he forgot where it was every time and asked me to post a link for him <laughs> every time. <laughs> he even once said, this is getting embarrassing, but... And he'd asked me to give him the link again. This man literally did not think to use Telegram's search function. And he also apparently didn't know how to Google my company name, which I prominently display everywhere, including on Telegram. Are people this inept in current year? <laughs> Everybody knows how to Google, don't they? He's got to be taking the piss. In short, there's no godly reason for that calendar to be hard for him to find. This man was in a senior year at college, so I refused to believe that he just lacked the intelligence. And then there was his sci-fi story. I can't go into too much detail here to protect his identity, but let me try to convey what I was working with. It's a big dystopian world with seven superstates. Each one has its own theme. Let's just say the seven deadly sins and each state's style of living was based off of one of those sins. So lust would be a society based on sex trafficking and porn, wrath would be overly warlike, that sort of thing. In every single one of these, the majority of the people are horrifically oppressed. 
that makes sense. And I immersed myself in this world to get an idea of the details that he'd worked out, what message he wanted to bring to his audience, or what psychological stuff he was working through with this world. I was also trying to determine where I was needed, but as I got to grips with the world, I saw that that was all that he was interested in. How oppressed the little man was. Extensively written and focused on to the exclusion of pretty much anything else in as many different flavors as possible. I mean, the idea sounds pretty cool on paper, but yeah, <laughs> if you're just trying to drive home how oppressed the little man is, it's probably because that's how he feels like in his own life. So he's basically self-inserting, but in the saddest way possible. <laughs> but subtlety goes a long way with writing, okay? You don't need to drill it home. A little bit of subtext will do just fine. Anyways, Tabodi is pretty verbose, and it took me a long time to dig through the masses of writing that he sent me. He thought he had a super complex world, but it really just amounted to poor man oppressed according to the theme of his super state. Simple logic and a little bit of imagination helped to fill in the details. Tabodi asked me once whether I could really handle the size and scale of his world. Yes. <laughs> yes, I could. <laughs> Oh, I could write a lot more about Tabodi, but that would make one giant post, so I'll just post this for now. You guys just let me know if you want me to write more. It does get worse, and in later installments, I'll be able to talk more about his entitled side. TLDR. Oh, God, dude. I hate word salad. <laughs> I had a script writing job for another YouTube channel back in November or something like that. And it was just word salad after word salad kept getting served up. <laughs> and eventually I'm like, dude, this is this is all I can do. <laughs> I bailed on that project completely because I couldn't stand reading through three pages in order to get what could have been done in a bullet point. You know, you want some simple revisions, but you're just taking the longest way possible to say it. So I could not have dealt with this man. He seems super frustrating. God. <laughs> <laughs> the calendar debacle, dude. That's so ridiculous. Bookmark the freaking page. What is going on here? I do really like the idea of his story and his world, but it just isn't as complex as he thinks that it is because he keeps drilling home one idea. Oh, look, I'm a little guy. I'm oppressed. And that ain't really conducive to world building. You know, I'm not exactly a world builder myself, but... I would probably hate to read whatever he's working on. The initial idea would catch me and then I'd be like, oh, this is just a fucking pity party book. <laughs> uh, but I guess we shall see how much worse it can get in the second part. The beard of a thousand irritations, the price raise, and the month, the months long meltdown. <laughs> Multiple months. Special. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to part two. In the last part of this story, I posted about how I first met the Beard of a Thousand Irritations, or Tabodi for short. He's a sci-fi fan working on his own original world and has been hiring me, a writing coach, to help him with his world-building development. I'd really just like to let off some steam about what working with him has been like because, good lord, <laughs> this man has earned his neckbeard moniker. I've changed a few details to protect the innocent and the bearded. In case you missed part one, here's our cast list. OP, same spiel. Tabodi, a customer of mine from mainland Europe, and same spiel. Emily is Tabodi's girlfriend. Jay is Tabodi's co-writer. And we're into the story. <laughs> when Tabodi first started using my services, I had low prices because I didn't know how much my specific set of services were wanted. I didn't know whether I was delivering them in a way that worked for my customers or how much disposable income my potential customers had. I started getting busier during my first six to nine months of working with Tabodi and I realized that I'd burn out if I continued to work for the same pathetic rate of pay and I'd spend untold hours looking for more customers. So I made a handful of social media posts asking my audience for help. My plan was this. Lots of the people who liked my services were students and graduates, and they were keen for me to succeed. I asked people to write me guest blog posts if they wanted to help and had some time. 
I figured that these students would be brimming with knowledge to share, so helping me out would be easy. Hell, they could even just repurpose one of their old essays if they wanted. To Bodie, as a senior in college, seemed a perfect fit for this. He was a structural engineering student, which I thought sounded like a subject full of low-hanging fruit that he could write about, especially for a writing coach's blog that focused partly on science fiction writing. I introduced the idea to him on the assumption that he would understand that I was asking because I needed help. He had told me a few times how pleased he was with the work that I was doing to help him develop his world, and I assumed that he would understand that I was just asking for a bit of reciprocal help. Surely he would be keen to share a little bit of the subject that he was learning. Nope. <laughs> he loosely expressed an interest, which in hindsight I think he only did to be polite, but he didn't write anything. He didn't tell me a clear, No, I don't want to do that. So I just hoped that I'd asked at a bad time and reminded him casually about it a couple of times over the coming months. Still no luck. I didn't get many guest blog posts from any of my audience over those months, and I had two minor burnouts by this time, so I decided to go one step further. I changed the deal by raising my core prices and offering my old prices for a month in return for a blog post. Hey, there you go. Now you think it with portals. <laughs> now, before I go on, I want to say that I accepted all of the following issues with Tabodi deliberately. When Tabodi is actively working with me, he spends a lot of money and compulsively orders more, which drastically reduces the amount of time that I have to spend finding new customers, the majority of whom tend to work with me in the short term. He has similar budgeting habits to your average neckbeard, which is to say he spends most of his money on nerdy stuff <laughs> and doesn't ring fence any of the things that he really needs, like set up funds for moving out of his parents' house. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Which he mentioned that he wanted to do several times, or, you know, therapy, which it was so obvious by this time that he needed. I do want to add my own footnote in there and say that everybody can use therapy. Therapy is useful to every person on the planet, but some people would benefit from it a lot more than others. <laughs> I wanted multiple customers like him. And I wanted to hone my delivery of the service so other Tabotis would start buying with minimal prompting and maintenance from me. If I could get multiple student beards to write blog posts for me at a discount, then I could have a firm customer base. When I presented my new discount for blog post deal to Tabodi, he went into panic mode. I no longer have the email he sent to me, so I can't quote it, but his panic was palpable. <laughs> <laughs> he literally begged me not to raise my prices. <laughs> I wish I was exaggerating. He pleaded with me to make him some kind of deal where he could keep paying the previous low prices. The blog post is the deal, you mouth breather. <laughs> I repeated my offer of the deal, and he told me, Reading about structural engineering won't help anyone who writes science fiction. I begged to differ and pointed out how many cityscapes and urban environments showed up in sci-fi art and writing. He admitted that I had a point, but complained that, I don't know anything about engineering. He said that, I've never written about it before. And that, nobody will like reading pages and pages about it. Oh, and the cherry on top, of course. I don't have the time. <laughs> I only got time to harass you over Telegram incessantly. <laughs> Bruh. I asked him how long an article he thought I was looking for, and he said, uh, I don't know, like 10,000 words. <laughs> <laughs> that is so fucking long. So I reassured him that I only wanted two or 3,000. Honestly, 1,000 would do. I pointed out that I was only looking for first year level of detail because most of my potential customers knew barely anything about engineering, so a dumbed-down tutorial about, I don't know, novel ways to incorporate living spaces into viaducts or making residential complexes based on beehives would have been fine. I ignored his statement that he knew nothing about the subject. He'd been training in that subject for three fucking years, so that was clearly untrue. <laughs> Unless he'd been lying about that the whole time. 
And if that was the case, then maybe it was time for him to just come clean. I had doubts that he could have reached this point in his education without writing the occasional essay, but I've since learned that not all education systems ask their clients to turn in essays, so that might have been true, but I wasn't asking for academic essays, just interesting little thought pieces. And if we were going to talk about Tabodi's lack of spare time, he spent hours planning his sci-fi world and playing video games. If he could spend his time on that, then he could invest a little bit of time into making a quick blog post for a significant discount. Man, OP, I, I respect the hustle, honestly, but <laughs> sometimes you gotta cut the bad fruit off the tree, you know what I mean? Make the sacrifice. <laughs> Tabodi tried bargaining with me again by asking, Can I write one about my sci-fi world instead? If he'd sounded confident writing about structural engineering and just wanted to use his world as a starting point for examples, then I would have said yes. But I got the impression that he was trying to get out of writing about engineering completely, so I said no. I pointed out that by writing a blog post, he would be helping out my whole audience, of which he was a part. Knowing what I now know, it was naive of me to think that he'd do something so selfless, but hey, at the time, I at least hoped that it would have some leverage. <laughs> I heard nothing from him for several weeks, so eventually I nudged him. You should have just enjoyed the blessed silence. Ah. <laughs> but again, I know you're, you're out here trying to hustle. <laughs> you can't just be like, ah, oh, whatever. Bills don't stop for nobody. He had reverted to thinking that I wanted an ultra-dense... 10,000 word academic piece that nobody but a senior student in his specific field would understand. So I wrote a thousand word blog post drawing knowledge from my previous career to use as an example of what I wanted. And I showed it to him. <laughs> you already working too hard. <laughs> I'm going to repeat myself here. I know that I was going way overboard with this guy. <laughs> and I knew it at the time. <laughs> as long as you know, I guess. I wasn't making much money from the business yet, every penny counted, and for all the frustration that he was putting me through, at least Tabodi articulated his objections about any requests I made. Feedback on a young business is valuable stuff, so I was determined to use this opportunity. I figured that if I made the process easy for him, then I'd automatically be making things easy for anybody else like him, and the business would be relatively smooth sailing later on down the line. Anybody else like him? <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> he seemed relieved when I showed him the 1,000 word article, so I got on with some other work, assuming that he now felt confident to write something for me. No dice. <laughs> I returned a few weeks later, and he had reverted to his 10,000 word belief again. <laughs> Does this guy have like short term memory loss or something? What's going on? I reminded him that I only wanted 1,000 words of dumbed down information. He gradually started being chatty again on Telegram. <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> and sometimes complained about no longer being able to afford consultations. Whenever I brought up the blog post, he told me that he'd write it sometime. And then the conversation would just kind of fizzle out. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to get him off your back. Be like, hey, bruh, how about that blog post? He's like, nah, <laughs> I don't think so. It was clear that he would not go through with it, but I had one more idea to try and make this avenue work. I had an informal chat with him about engineering on Telegram. I asked him what he'd been working on lately on his course, and he told me. He tended to phrase things awkwardly and use jargon, but at least he was talking about his specialist subject. I kept on asking questions until he told me a few interesting pieces of information relating to structural engineering. When we'd been talking for around an hour, I asked him if he'd be happy for me to package up what he'd told me into a blog post, and he could just put his name on it. Surely after he'd committed to delivering information the first time, it wouldn't be so scary anymore. His reaction? He backpedaled. <laughs> and he told me that he wasn't sure if what he said was correct. <laughs> God. <laughs> this dude's gonna build buildings? <laughs> We're all going to hell. <laughs> so I said that if he wanted to check back over what he'd said and correct it, 
he was welcome to, and that I'd be happy to award the month-long discount for that. Well, he still wasn't sure. As you can imagine, I was not happy about the amount of work I was having to do just to convince him to do his side of the deal. <laughs> 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 the level of patience is just legendary, dude. I would have been gone in like the first month. It ain't worth it, sorry. I pointed out that the blog post deal was meant to save me time, and we'd already negated most of the benefits, but I'd be prepared to make an exception this one time. Surely once his first blog post was up, he'd realize how unthreatening the deal I offered was, and he'd keep writing blog posts by himself and get the discount that he had been so desperately wanting for months. And then, to extrapolate to other student beards, if I could come up with a way of interviewing people about their specialist subject more efficiently, then this system could actually work. A few weeks later, he asked me again if he could write a blog post about his sci-fi world. <laughs> I was just so exhausted by this point that I said, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but I was not happy about it. He never got around to writing it, and I... <laughs> <laughs> I gave up at that point. <laughs> Classic. I was just out of ideas, and I'd begun to find more consistent work elsewhere from people who paid without a second thought, let alone the kind of panic that I'd seen from Tabodi, and these people that were actually paying me were a pleasure to talk to. Shocking. <laughs> After all that, he decided that he was able to pay the full price for my services after all. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> and he resumed paying for me to continue working with him on his world. The end result of all that is that I have a neat little discount offer that almost nobody uses, but which earns me brownie points for presenting it as an option. It has prompted several conversations with people who have gone on to become customers and that is a significant enough benefit for me. I've presented it to two more student beards who thought it was cool lol, <laughs> but they didn't use it themselves and both of them paid full price. TLDR. God, dude. <laughs> I'm just so tickled by the fact that you're like, yeah, write whatever you want about the fucking sci-fi world, whatever. <laughs> and he still never did it. <laughs> God. Oh, the level of laziness. It's just, it's just so beardy. There is some post in the comment about like changing prices halfway through, but it doesn't seem like anybody was under contract here. OP is well within his rights to raise prices at any time he would like. I definitely understand what it's like to try and get a small business off the ground, and sometimes adjustments must be made. Luckily, OP was willing to offer this deal, this blog deal. <laughs> Which really, a thousand words for a blog is not even that hard. I used to knock out three thousand word blogs every single week. And the actual amount of time that I spent working on the blogs <laughs> was probably less than like eight hours. Most of it was like prep, you know, keyword research, inserting affiliate links, putting pictures up there, stuff like that. That extended the time that I spent on the blogs considerably. But if somebody's just looking for a thousand words, no problem, dude. <laughs> I'll knock that right out. Especially for a significant discount. Ooh, boy, I love a discount. <laughs> oh, and blogs are indeed an awesome way to get the word out, you know? They persist on the internet basically forever as long as you do your SEO and keywords correctly. They're going to drive some traffic, but I don't know about doing one every month. I'd say one every three months. We could lock it in for that. Four vlogs a year is a lot easier for me to stomach than 12. I guess depending how big the discount is. <laughs> I know I could use some creative writing coaching once in a while. That's why Ramtide is part of the brain trust. I'm like, hey, bruh, <laughs> let me run this by you. And he's like, hey, that's shit. <laughs> let me spruce it up. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see your business picking up and taking off OP. And honestly, this is something that is highly in demand, I do think. So it's no surprise to me that it was able to take flight. I am just sorry that you had to deal with a neckbeard seemingly right out of the gate. <laughs> but I'll be damned if it don't make a good story, man. It is a little light on the cringe, but after what we went through yesterday with Miss Piggy and the day before that with just neckbeard things and, oh, blabberbeard the day before that, <laughs> we've been coming to heavier with the cringe lately, so 
I think it's nice to step back, take a little break, although I'm sure the worst is yet to come. So we will revisit this saga sometime in the future. I hope that you guys will like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the video. Maybe share it around. Getting somebody hooked into a brand new saga. Ooh, that's hot. <laughs> I definitely appreciate that. I also hope you check out the links in the description. We got my Amazon affiliate link, Wifey's channel, Mr. and Mrs. Red X, my personal subreddit, r slash Red X Reads. We've got the social medias, the Twitter and the Discord and the Facebook. Oh, and how could I almost fake forget about my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons? You're seeing some names on the screen right now, and I would like to thank them all, but especially Zero MMX, Lady Nix, Robert Waits, Pope Squid, Rebecca H, Cider Drinker, Tato Fair, The Last Shinobi, Mark211, Michael Undead, Aaron W, Mitch, John Hero, Candy Sora, Digian Z, Fire Drake, Little Lone Wolf, Lone Island, Shara, Marvin DeMoth, Ms. Monday, Silent Revolver, Jam Coon, Leon Embers, TSM Kirby, Redwind, and Synaptic Boomstick. Whew. <laughs> That list getting big, boy. Thank you guys so, so much for supporting the channel. Putting your money where your mouth is, or your money where my mouth is. Is that more accurate? <laughs> Sometimes videos do get demonetized, and it's just really nice to be able to lean back on the patrons and not sweat that too hard. If you can support monetarily, anybody else out there, I mean, that's, that's just huge. I thank you quite heartily in advance. But if you can't right now, don't sweat it too hard, guys. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. Because really the views is how my beard gets buttered, mostly. <laughs> In order to come on back, you'll need to keep yourself safe out there. That means washing your hands. Don't, don't do this hand sanitizer stuff, alright? Wash them. Feels good. Is good. <laughs> but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Mental health is just as important as physical health. And on that note, I want to remind you, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you in the next one. And until then, bye-bye.